What's up, y'all? You know what today is? That's right, boys and girls. It's another Brother J Day. So we'll do a little bit of randomness before we get into building some stuff. But I just wanted to show you a few quick things before we get rocking. I'm going to show you some uh, really small materials that I got out of my 12-inch pan yesterday and the day before that while I was processing down cons from last fall. If you might remember, I mentioned in my earlier videos that I was down in the Rio Grande River getting materials during the fall and um, I'll show you a little something I pulled out of that material which is mostly beach sand or in this case river sand <sighs> river sand is a pain to process believe me but anyway I'm gonna show you this and I hope you can see it pretty good adjust my mic a little bit so you can hear me a little better too now when I show you this I can't really see what you're looking at on the video because I have to tilt my video monitor down but check this out that is a little speck of gold probably about a half a millimeter that and that are can you guess it no they're not silver they're not nickel either they're platinum those are platinum platinum has a a smoky silverish color to it kind of a smoky translucent silver to it so when you're first getting out there and you find some platinum you might you'll be inclined to think that it's either lead because it does actually look a lot like lead lead in its natural state has a silvery color to it also but that's not lead that's platinum and platinum has a smoky translucent kind of uh, metallic to it I wouldn't really call it silver it's got a smoky metallic translucence to it it's hard to describe it I strongly recommend you look around online and check out the other materials that will settle in the bottom of your pan when you're prospecting for gold because there are quite a few minerals out there that are worth a lot of money and they're not gold platinum is one of them down here in New Mexico we actually have a significant amount of platinum we also have a lot of lead and sometimes it's kind of hard to tell the difference but there are ways to do it we'll get into that later on right now just basically if you're prospecting in your 12 inch pan and you're consistently getting a smoky silverish looking material at the bottom of your pan don't throw it out there's a strong chance it could be platinum okay so um, now we're gonna build some stuff uh, the first thing we're gonna build because I lost that last set of videos because I didn't have any audio I couldn't figure it out but for some reason you know my audio went out and then for some reason I don't understand my audio came back good for you because you almost didn't get this video series but today without any further ado we're gonna build a snuffer bottle out of materials that you have laying around the house now if you go to a gold prospecting shop and you buy a snuffer bottle or if you go to Walmart where sometimes you can get a snuffer bottle it's gonna run you about five bucks there's no reason to spend five bucks out of your pocket on something that you can make for free you will need a couple of things and I mentioned these in the last video but I guess I'll have to mention them now uh, shucks where's that long piece at <coughs> Uh, to build a snuffer bottle, you're going to need some quarter inch aquarium hose. This is just, uh, I believe, is vinyl. Vinyl aquarium hose. You can get that at Walmart. I think they sell 20 feet for like $3. Super cheap. <coughs> <coughs> and to build a snuffer bottle, you're going to need. That's right dishwashing bottle so next time your dishwashing detergent runs out don't throw that bottle away it doesn't have to be dawn and I'm not trying to give them a plug they ought to pay me for that I'm just saying a detergent bottle is designed to squeeze and come back okay it's also designed to hold liquids without leaking is very light is very effective And the lid is ideal for making a snuffer bottle because it already has a squirt spout right there. Now it's made to squirt, 
but when you let go it's going to suck and that's what a snuffer bottle does it sucks like a vacuum and pulls your materials out of the pan into your snuffer bottle so what we're going to do is you're going to take that aquarium hose and pinch off a piece about I don't know I like to run about four and a half five inches and there's reason you want it a little bit long next thing you're going to do is you're going to take one paring knife and you're going to gently but not too gently twist that paring knife in that hole until that hole has enough room to accommodate your fishing hose your fish hose your aquarium hose now when you're doing this you need to test the size while you're grinding it out you want to test the size of your hose pretty regularly now you can get pretty seriously you can get pretty serious with this uh, aquarium hose without damaging it it's hard to damage it but the short and long of the story is once you grind out that hole to about a quarter inch because this is about a quarter inch it might be eighth inch I'm not exactly sure but once you grind out the squirt hole in your bottle cap to accommodate this then you're going to stick dish in the squirt hole and I want you to look carefully at my hands you see I'm only holding that aquarium hose by about a millimeter I twist it push it in twist it push it in and you keep doing that until you got a good I don't know inch and a half or two inches down inside of there now if you look you can see right there that the aquarium hose is coming about an inch and a half down inside of the bottle and that's very 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 important the reason that's important is because as you can see I already have material in here now if I flip this upside down water comes out right on my computer probably gonna destroy my keyboard even worse the water comes out but the concentrates did not if this aquarium hose is right up at the top of the bottle and you flip it upside down the concentrates are going to come pouring out with the water so it's very important kind of hard to see that but it's very important that this aquarium hose goes at least an inch to an inch and a half down inside of the bottle so that you don't lose any of your hard work by accident uh, the other thing is the only way to snuffer something out of your pan let's say I have my pan right here and it's full of concentrates and water so I'm gonna stick my snuffer bottle down in here to get the stuff out the way you do that is like this first you squeeze the bottle then you stick it down in the water and you let go and you get the vacuum suction pulling it all out now there's a problem with this if you don't have your trap that's what they call this they call this the contrap if you don't have your contrap set deep enough in the bottle then even though you compress the bottle first when you flip it over you're gonna lose concentrates into your pan you don't want to do that you want your concentrates to stay in the bottle and the only way to do that is to have this hose at least an inch and a half down inside the bottle really two inches is even better because the only thing you want going through this hose you want water coming out only water coming out and when you let go of the bottle you want the water and the concentrates to suck through the hose into the bottle and when you get your concentrates in the bottle that's where you want them to stay otherwise you've done a hell of a lot of work for no reward that would suck all right so I showed you how to make a snuffer bottle for free because if you eat you have dishes and if you have dishes you have dish detergent laying around the house so the next time that dish detergent runs empty keep that bottle get yourself 20 feet of aquarium hose from Walmart and take your little paring knife 
grind the top out and make yourself a snuffer bottle for free you'll be glad you did save yourself five bucks right there remember if the gold is not paying for the material if the gold is not paying for the equipment then don't buy the equipment you're not gonna make money prospecting gold if you're spending money out of your paycheck on equipment the only time you buy equipment is if the gold that you found out of the earth is paying for that equipment and even then you don't want to spend 100 percent of your cash return on equipment you know this is a business a business has overhead that's true but you can't let your overhead exceed your profits or you will be out of business prospecting is very hard work you're putting in a hell of a lot of hard work and you're losing half of your hard work because you're not thinking about how you're going about it you're going to get tired and fed up and you're going to quit you're going to give up right when you're at the edge of really making it so don't wear yourself out don't kill yourself you know travel light because coming back to the vehicle you're going to be traveling heavy with concentrates and build anything that you can build to keep money in your pocket if the gold is not paying for the sluice don't buy the sluice if the gold is not paying for the uh, dry washer don't buy the dry washer you only buy the stuff when the gold is paying for it okay so that's how you make a bottle all right now i'm gonna pause so there'll be a short little video glitch but i'm coming right back okay next we're going to build a blue bowl okay we're back sorry for the little glitch in the video next we're going to get straight to building what i want to avoid a uh, uh, copyright infringement so let me not call it a blue bowl let me call it a liquid gravity trap i'm going to avoid the copyright infringements besides a liquid gravity trap is a better description of what we're going to build here to build this you're going to need that 10 gallon trash can uh, I'm sorry the 5 gallon trash can I told you you can get a dollar general or a family dollar for like I think it's like three dollars maybe five dollars something like that it's not gonna break your bank but you're gonna need that and look around and make sure you get the kind that you can fold easily if you can fold it easily it's harder to break okay you're also going to need to build this project you're going to need some garden hose standard garden hose one salad bowl and a set of cereal bowls like this like i said at family dollar you can get three of these cereal bowls for a dollar so i recommend you just go ahead and get three of them because i guarantee you you're going to fuck it up the first time around Cutting this thing out takes a lot of patience, and you got to be very careful. So you're probably going to screw it up the first time, but by you get by the time you get to the third bowl, you'll cut this thing out perfectly. Okay, all right. So, uh, where's that bowl at? The first thing you need to do start with the trash can, because if you don't get this right to contain your uh, water and your pump. There's no reason to work on the uh, the actual gravity bolt. So start with your can first. And the way you do that is basically just the same way we did with the snuffer bottle. I'm going to have to adjust my seat so I can show you this from the side that you can see. All right. So you take your paring knife. I got one paring knife right here. Now these things are razor sharp when they're brand new. So be very careful because you will slice your finger good if you ain't paying attention and you take the paring knife now you can see here I've already got a hole in here and I really don't need another one so I'm just gonna go through the motions just so I can show you what to do you take your paring knife and you set it here and you just start turning it and my fingers are on the other side but my fingers are spread like this so that when the paring knife punches through it'll punch through the gap in between my fingers so you take your paring knife and you put sufficient pressure on it to start grinding it out but not too much pressure you don't want to cut a slit in the bowl it'll ruin it you just want to make a perfect circle so you have to be patient and slowly grind in there now one thing that will help is take a lighter and heat the tip of this a little bit and then you won't have to use so much pressure to push on it to get it started okay and you just keep going until you got a hole I know I got a hole there but you just keep going until you got a hole and you run it all the way 
to the very back of the paring knife and the hole still will not be big enough to fit your hose through there so the next thing you do is you step up to a bigger blade or I should just say a wider blade it doesn't have to be long it just has to be wider and you continue the process you keep twisting it making a perfect circle you don't want to do this don't do that just twist it in a circle like this and let it slowly grind that hole out in a perfect circle now when you get to the very back of this knife in the case of this one it wasn't quite big enough so I had to go up to a butcher knife but it's the same deal I have a long butcher knife that has a pretty fat blade at the very back of it so I slid it in there until the blade just fit right in the hole and very gentle pressure and I just kept twisting and by the time you get to that third knife you better start checking your hole to your hose to make sure that they fit correctly okay so you just keep going until you got the diameter of hole you need to fit the hose the garden hose you're going to run in there all right pause for a second okay we're back now the next thing you're going to need to do you're going to need that 500 gallon an hour sump pump and you're going to need your hose now I'm going to show you something very closely here. You see the ends of this hose? This end is the correct diameter, the natural diameter that it was made at. This diameter here is a little bit larger. And the reason it's a little bit larger is because I've had it hooked up to my sump pump for almost a year and a half. Now I'm not going to lie to you, it is a pain in the ass to get the connecting end onto your sump pump. You're going to have to be patient about it, and the way you do it is you go at an angle. See that angle? And you just got to twist and twist and twist until you can force it over that gap. Until you got the hose attached to your sump pump like so. Now for me, that only took that long. For you, it's going to take a good 30 minutes, 45 minutes before you finally mash this hose up on that pump outlet but just be patient with it patience is the key to prospecting just be patient with it and you will get this hose on that outlet okay <coughs> now you might be wondering why do we hook the hose up to the pump now it seems like the pump would be the last thing but the way you're going to build this system you have to hook the hose up to the pump first because it makes the whole process a lot easier and i'll show you why the next thing you're going to do you're going to take your trash can or your uh, water trap and you're going to set your pump down inside the trash can I should point this out sump pumps are designed to get wet so the wire connection going into the motor for this pump it's designed to get wet it's insulated against water no problem but your connecting leads are not so make sure that your connecting leads are long enough to come at least a foot maybe even two feet outside of your trash can otherwise you're going to electrocute yourself don't do that okay now what you do you got your hose hooked up to your sump pump your bilge pump you're going to set your bilge pump inside your trash can and you don't have to worry about it being set in there correctly right now you just put it in there that's it you put it in there and as you can see my wire leads come about a foot outside of the trash can and then I can connect them to my leads for my solar panel or batteries or whatever not really that important next thing like I said right now don't worry about your pump you really just want it in the can but you really don't even have to have it in the can the next thing is you're going to hook this hose through the hole now if you got that diameter right then that hose is going to come through that hole really easy like that as far as being watertight the hose is going to flex like this toward the bowl and you can probably see that it causes a little indentation a bend in the side of the bucket that's okay that bend in the side of the bucket seals that hole up so water won't come out of there and the end of the hose we're going to put into our 
gravity trap our water gravity trap is now sticking on the outside of the bucket our sump pump is already hooked up to the hose I actually have it upside down let me flip that right side up okay so your sump pump fits down inside your bucket and you might have to adjust it just a little bit but now I'll show you so that's your basic setup to provide water to your gravity trap the sump pump is down there in the bottom of the bowl your electrical leads come at least a foot outside of your bowl you got your hose to provide water to your gravity trap already coming through the hole from your water reservoir this is both your water reservoir for your pump and it's also your uh, your uh, material trap for your blondes okay so you'll see in a minute but the blondes will go through the gravity trap and they'll get trapped down in the bottom of this bucket and all you'll have left in your gravity trap bowl is the material you're trying to trying to inspect your, your heavies all right uh, now you will have to adjust your thing, adjust the length of your hose a little bit. And when you got it all set up, the hose is actually going to rise up. And that's important because you want the hose inside the can to hug around the side of it. It just makes the whole thing more stable. It makes it work better. It makes it easier to work with. So you want your hose to wrap like a snake around the side of the can, the trap, the water reservoir, whatever you want to call it. All right. Now, we have our salad bowl, and I'm going to show you something. See how I broke the hole in my gravity trap? That's what happens when you're in a rush. You try not to be in a rush. Breaks my heart that I cracked this bowl. I am going to have to make a new one, but I'll do that another day. It's a little time consuming to actually do it from scratch, okay? It would take me a good half hour to grind that hole out correctly, and I'm not going to rush it. But I can still show you how to do this. So the next thing you do is you take your hose and, well, this actually takes a little bit of coordination and I'm not known for coordination. But you want to twist, make sure you twist. You don't want to just stab it in there. That's how I broke my bowl. I was pulling it out instead of twisting it out so you want to twist your hose in there oh, shit. I broke it again damn it well I don't broke my bowl twice this bowl is almost worthless now I'll definitely have to make a new one but I can show you how to set it up keep in mind this bowl is two years old this plastic is a lot more brittle than it was when I bought it when I bought it it wouldn't break almost no matter what I did to it, but it's been sitting out in the sun and the rain and the snow for a year and a half. All right, so anyway, now, let me show you this without dumping my cons out. Now you can see how the hose is in there. You see how the hose goes through the bowl and it wraps around the side of the bowl like a snake to the other side. And then the water will come out of the hose down into the bottom of the bowl and it'll give you a swirly water effect and that swirly water will push the blondes over the gravity trap and we are going to give this a spin even though I broke this so I'm going to have to set it in my catch tub so that I don't have water spraying everywhere so I'm going to hit pause so that I can hook the connections up to my battery and put some material and get some materials ready to process through here so be right back What's up, y'all? Sorry for the little video, you know, a little video blip, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, we're back. We're ready to load up our gravity, our liquid gravity trap, and run it through its paces. Now, a couple of things I need to tell you about this setup. The first thing is, until you put water, 
until you put water inside of the reservoir it's going to be very unstable because it's extremely light this is plastic this is plastic there's nothing in here heavy all right so you need something heavy in here in order to make it sit down flat and not fall all over the place use water here's how you're going to load it up take yourself your uh, collection pail full of water and you just pour it straight into your liquid gravity trap just pour it straight in there and the water is going to flow over the gravity hole now I actually omitted one thing let me tell you this real quick remember how we ground this hole out right here to get the hose through you're going to need to do that on the bottom as well you're going to need to grind that hole out on the bottom as well so that you have an escape for your gravity trap also you're going to need to take uh not a knife what i used for this was a really fine saw a fine saw blade like a, a hacksaw blade as a matter of fact that's exactly what i used i used a hacksaw blade with a really fine tooth to cut this out so you're going to need to cut this out with a really fine hack tooth a fine tooth hacksaw blade or some other saw blade with a very fine tooth you're going to need your paring knife to grind out this hole at the bottom to let the water and blondes escape from the gravity trap and the last step will be sandpaper take sandpaper and on the underside of this bowl hold on I have another bowl use sandpaper and rough this surface up real good on the on the top edge of the bowl you know as a cereal bowl this is the top edge take sandpaper like 120 grit and really rough this thing up you could use an emery board if that's all you got <coughs> but the point is you want to rough this up real good and you want to take sandpaper and just like with any other plastic prospecting bowl take sandpaper and rough up the bottom real good then take some Gorilla Glue I'm partial to Gorilla Glue but really any kind of waterproof glue you want to use is fine but take that Gorilla Glue and put a bead of Gorilla Glue around the top edge of the bowl and you're gonna need to let that gorilla glue sit until it gets tacky but once it gets tacky you flip it over and just set it right down there in the bottom of the bowl give it a little squish to make sure the glue spreads out and then leave it alone until tomorrow you gotta let that glue set up real good but once that glue is set up it'll be just like this you'll have the hole in the bottom for the gravity trap you'll have the uh, riser I don't know what else to call it so I'm gonna call it a riser to uh, push the blondes over the top and keep the heavies in the bottom your hose will be connected to your bowl you've already got your water reservoir set up in your uh, five gallon trash can here and you're ready to rock that's everything to it as far as construction all right so once again we'll pick up where we left off as far as preparing your gravity trap to use it you're going to want the water in your reservoir to be up here about an inch underneath of the hole you cut into the, the uh, trash can for the hose you need the water pretty high up because when that pump starts going it's going to suck that water out really fast so you need to fill this up to about an inch about two inches from the top of the can about one inch from the bottom of the hole you ground out for your hose okay and the way you fill it up with water is you just take your trusty pail right here and you just pour your water directly into the gravity trap just like that and you just let the water run down and if you don't have enough which I don't in this case that's all good 
take your next pail of water and pour that in there too. Now I have a little bit of material in this bucket, so I'm gonna go ahead and swish it on down there and let it just come out. You, you might be able to see it. You see that little bit down there in the crease? So I got a little material down in there. And just like with any prospecting, you want to add some jet dry. Or if detergent is all you got, just a tiny little bit of detergent or a bit of jet dry. And that water is already pre-mixed with what I need in there. But you want to have either a little teeny bit of detergent or about a teaspoon of jet dry. Always. Especially anytime you're dealing with micro gold and black sand, you want jet dry jet dry is the best dishwashing detergent is acceptable but you only want a small amount of dishwashing detergent so I recommend you pre-mix it um, about I don't know I'd probably say like a half a gram of detergent for a gallon of water is about right you'll get some bubbles in there but it won't be outrageous so you can do it like that and you know if you want to you could always just pull the water straight from your catch pan and pour that in in order to fill your gravity trap it doesn't really matter main thing is you just want to get enough water in there so the water level gets up to here so that your bilge pump won't run dry you don't want your bilge pump to run dry because it'll burn it out One thing about those bilge pumps, they work really good as long as they got water, but if they run for 10 minutes with no water, you'll burn that motor right out just like that. So don't ever run a bilge pump without water. Alright. Now at this point, <laughs> you saw the water spill out. So I got a bunch of water in there, and the way I do that is I just squish it down in there. Just go ahead and squish a little extra water off, that's fine. Okay. Now let's talk about setting this up. For this thing to work correctly, for this gravity trap to work correctly, you must have this rim of the riser exactly level to gravitational pull. It's extremely important. If you've got water coming over just one side of the riser, it's not going to work efficiently. You want the water to run in an even stream all the way around the entire riser for this to work right. Okay, so it is extremely important that you adjust your bowl however you need to adjust it so that this riser is exactly dead even with gravitational pull. Okay. Enough said on that. Now I got a glitch. I have to keep this in my catch pan because I know it's going to spray water out of that hole in my bowl. I know that. I really don't want water all over my floor. So I'm going to have to pause for just a second. But you know what? Yeah, we've already shown you how to build this. So in the very next video, we'll actually run this through its paces. We'll use our brand new homemade snuffer bottle and all kinds of good stuff. And we're going to do some actual uh, micro gold prospecting and we're going to use our brand new liquid gravity trap to prospect that black sand and i'll show you how it works so i'll catch you in the next video like subscribe share if you want to i appreciate you and remember every day brother j day peace love and soul get that gold